Coming up next, the riveting story behind a timeless musical monument, which was the soundtrack to one of the most turbulent periods in American history. The track encapsulates the fear and uncertainty that characterized an era of social upheaval, political unrest, and cultural shifts. It was a desolate and apocalyptic harbinger set to a happy, jangly rhythm. The lyrics definitely contradicted the music in a most peculiar way from a brilliant singer-songwriter who wasn't allowed to perform it for years due to a bad record deal. And then when he was finally able to do it in concert, uh, he noticed the audience was botching one of the lyrics in the song in a very hilarious way. He started singing it that way a few times as well. Let's delve into the historical, cultural context surrounding the creation of this classic rock standard that became an anthem for a generation caught in the cross currents of change. Coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you love the timeless classics of the rock and roll era, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and beyond, you'll dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now, click the red button and the notification bell so you always know what's coming down the pipe. We got a lot of great interviews coming. We also have a Patreon. You check that out, that helps us to do more interviews. We are a self-funded channel, it helps us keep it daily. Very important to, to keep this history. So Creedence Clearwater Revival, most commonly referred to uh, by their CCR acronym, was indeed a, a spiritual awakening for a generation of music fans. The band deliberately stayed away from jumping on the psychedelic bandwagon of the 60s, instead keeping it real with a distinctive style that let the music do the talking for them. The whole summer love thing wasn't their bag. I don't even know what this is. This sort of thing ain't my bag, baby. CCR's vigorous brew of rock, folk, and swamp blues was perhaps best showcased in their 1969 timeless classic, Bad Moon Rising. I see bad moon rising. CCR led by the strong-willed frontman, John Fogarty, of course, they broke out in the late 60s, one of the most tumultuous periods in American history. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in 1963. Then three years later, an assassin's bullet took the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. Then just two months after that, Robert Kennedy was shot. And then you have the Vietnam War dividing the country and uh, disrupting virtually the entire planet. The atmosphere, it was ominous. And John Fogarty, he was feeling it. CCR, they started strong. Their debut single in 68, cover of the Dale Hawkins rockabilly tune, uh, Suzy Q. It was a solid hit that narrowly missed the top 10. It peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. Proving that they were not a flash in the pan by any stretch of the imagination, the band's lead second single, uh, Proud Mary, that was an even bigger smash. It became the first of five singles to crest at the number two position on the Billboard Hot 100. Having five number two singles and failing to hit number one, that was a dubious record that the band still holds today. The band's second number two single was Bad Moon Rising a two minute and 21 second fire and brimstone prophecy about an impending apocalypse rock and roll written by a rock and roll seer, John Fogarty. I see trouble on the way. Now the idea for Bad Moon Rising had become a CCR song. That was conceived when Fogarty stumbled upon a phrase that he had written in a notebook. Uh, back in 1967, John Fogarty started to write down phrases or just random groups of words in a notebook, anything that sounded good. After the success of Suzy Q and Proud Mary, you know, the last thing that John Fogarty wanted to do was rest on the band's laurels. He was determined to keep their string of hits alive. Fogarty's biggest worry was that the group would fall flat on their faces. So just when Proud Mary was thriving on the radio, uh, Fogarty knew that he had to look ahead and write the next hit for this band. Fogarty turned to his book of phrases, you know, that he sounded like a good title for a song, and he saw it right there. He had written down Bad Moon Rise, and he's like, that's it. That's what I got to call this song. I see there of lightning. Now, at first, uh, Fogarty couldn't remember where he got the inspiration to write that title down. But then it came to him. When he was a teenager, he was fascinated by a 1941 black and white film called The Devil and Daniel Webster. 
Now, the plot of The Devil and Daniel Webster is centered in a rural community in 19th century New Hampshire. The protagonist is a poor, kind-hearted farmer named Jabez Stone. Although Stone is a hard-working man, beloved by his neighbors, he's constantly broke and he's cursed by bad luck. After a chain of setbacks, Stone hits rock bottom and exasperatedly declares that he would sell his own soul to the devil for just two cents. A few moments later, the devil appears to Stone in the form of a man that introduces himself as Mr. Scratch. Who are you? My name is Scratch. Mr. Scratch offers Stone a deal. If he sells his soul, he'll reap the benefits of seven years of good fortune and prosperity. So Stone, he kicks off his new life with great hope, He's suddenly able to pay his debts and buy new farming tools. And soon Stone becomes one of the wealthiest people around and befriends a popular local politician and attorney whose name is Daniel Webster. Mr. Scratch attempts to convince Webster to sell his soul, as his friend Stone had done, uh, with a promise that in turn he will become the President of the United States. Now, I don't want to spoil uh, the ending for anyone that hasn't seen the movie. I will summarize it by saying that Mr. Scratch is not a happy camper. The United States. You? <laughs> You'll never be President. I'll see to that. The Devil and Daniel Webster is very intriguing, compelling film noir that you should try to find when you have the time. It's uh, worth checking out. Uh, Fogarty's favorite scene in the movie that he incorporated into the lyrics for Bad Moon Rising is the part where a wicked hurricane wipes out the crops of all the farms in the area. But it miraculously skips over the cornfields owned by Stone. That scene is where he came up with the first line in verse two, Bad Moon Rising. I feel the hurricane a blowing. I know the end is coming soon. I hear hurricanes blowing. So the role of Jabez Stone, that was portrayed by James Craig, who originally went by the name James Mead. Because of his uh, striking similarities to cinema superstar Clark Gable, Craig had a brief stint as a leading man for MGM back in the day. Besides The Devil and Daniel Webster, Craig starred in the films Kitty Foyle in 1940 and The Human Comedy in 1943, for those of you that want to know. Why haven't you married one of those guys? Actually, one of his last roles was a performance in the made-for-TV sci-fi Doomsday Machine in 72, in which he played uh, Dr. Hainer. Now, shortly after that movie, uh, Craig actually quit the entertainment business and became a real estate agent until his passing. John Fogarty was the undisputed linchpin songwriter for Creedence Clearwater Revival. Uh, he had a very unique approach to writing lyrics. His process could only be classified as mystical. Fogarty would stay up late in the night in his apartment, long after his wife and baby had gone to bed. He'd just sit in the living room staring at a blank wall to clear his head, and just let his imagination take hold. When I mean, you think about it, his writing style was more like a novelist uh, than a songsmith. Reading about it, he couldn't tolerate uh, any noise or he'd lose his concentration. You know, Fogarty jokingly compared his method to a form of transcendental meditation uh, because it came from such a genuine uh, personal place. Now, while CCR was breaking, influential artists like Bob Dylan and the band were turning to folk and country as a neutralizer to the psychedelia movement. CCR, on the other hand, they believed that rock and roll was the heartbeat of the nation. Uh, lyrically, Fogarty songs, they were full of compassion and moral transparency, really brazen sincerity. He didn't specifically call out his subjects, you know, like the Vietnam War, Richard Nixon, but listeners, they knew what he meant. When Fogarty wrote about a bad moon rising, seeing earthquakes, lightning, I know the end is coming soon. rivers overflowing, and the voice of rage and ruin, he was expressing an honest assessment of the social storm that was plaguing our nation at the time. In essence, John Fogarty wrote a dramatic wake-up call you know, that we as a people were on a collision course that needed to be changed before it was too late. Of course, we haven't heard that bell as of yet. Um, as we continue to break down this classic, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I always wear on here. You know, speaking of which, with inflation so high, Zenny is the perfect option for getting you or your loved ones prescription glasses. You can design your own frames to your liking and not break the bank. If you click on the link right up here, you can get up to 80% off regular retail prices. Check it out today. 
If you subscribe to the zodiac principle that the position of the moon when you were born represents the essence of who you are, then a bad moon rising represents a bad omen for the future. Fogarty expanded the concept of bad moon rising to something catastrophic for mankind. It was about an impending apocalypse, really. Sonically, CCR, they made Americana that you could dance to. A proficient bar band could easily play a CCR song. You know, the tunes didn't consist of complex uh, chord structures or drum patterns. Hope you got your things together. The chords that Fogarty sequenced for the melody of Bad Moon Rising, they didn't fit the doom and gloom theme of the song's lyrics. Instead of writing a song with you know, sad, menacing chords such as a tritone, Fogarty, his arrangement was a dichotomy. It was more like a, a bright, snappy, rockabilly ditty. Bad Moon Rising wasn't an original guitar riff really at all, but Fogarty was forthcoming on where he got it from. In his memoir, Fogarty admitted that he borrowed the guitar riff for Bad Moon Rising from Scotty Moore's guitar work on the Elvis song, I'm Left, You're Right, She's Gone. We're right, I'm left. She's a to Fogarty, Bad Moon Rising, it's a sideways version of that Elvis tune. As he explained in an interview posted in Guitar World back in 1998, he couldn't do the alternating bass thumb pick stuff. So he played the music for Bad Moon Rising with a flat pick and he used his fingers for the upper notes. The melody builds around an open E chord with an added sixth, C sharp and then following that up with a G to a G sharp in the primary guitar riff. Um, with his guitar tuned a whole step down, Fogarty developed the iconic DAG chord progression that made Bad Moon Rise and just hum along really nicely. Fogarty was adamant that he never tried to hide the fact that he had lifted this riff, claimed that he wasn't stealing it, he was really honoring it. Now, legend has it that after an award show, uh, it was back in 86, uh, Scotty Moore, Elvis's guitarist, who passed away in 2016, actually grabbed John Fogarty from behind, whipped him around and shouted, hey, give me back my licks. When Fogarty presented Bad Moon Rising to his bandmates, Stu Cook, Doug Clifford, and his brother Tom Fogarty, they loved it. I mean, how could you not? Instant hit. But you know what? John's enthusiasm for the song, it ran out of steam. He just didn't feel the song was up to the standards that had been set by Proud Mary. Actually, Fogarty got a bad case of flop sweats, worrying that he was already on his way down instead of counting uh, their record-setting run. Bad Moon Rising was, of course, a runaway smash. And by the end of 1969, CCR was one of the biggest acts in the entire nation. They were booked to be the headliner of the second night of the infamous Woodstock Music and Art. And Heat, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Grateful Dead, Janis Joplin, Jefferson Airplane, at the Who. The revival. But actually, CCR wasn't like the other acts that were booked to play Woodstock, not at all. They had a working man's mentality to their live performances. And they actually had a strict rule not to do any drugs. Uh, Doug Clifford recalled why they had the no drugs mandate. Uh, he and his bandmates would often attend concerts by their fellow local musicians and witness them playing under the influence. And Clifford said that they sounded terrible. After a show at the famed Fillmore in San Francisco, the band made a pact right then and there never to do drugs or alcohol. Said they chose to get high on their music or just get out of the business. Now, John Fogarty did not write Bad Moon Rising specifically about the Vietnam War, but the elephant was always in the room. The war left its mark on every aspect of society in the 60s and early 70s. Although the song was not directly about Vietnam, the American troops adopted it as one of their anthems to get through the horror of war. When Fogarty plays the song in his special shows for the survivors of the war, uh, the vets just go crazy. Tonight, it's very apparent that Bad Moon Rising, it was a really important part of their lives. In fact, uh, CCR and The Doors were two of the most played bands by the soldiers. Looks like 
Now, as serious as the lyrical tone for Bad Moon Rising is, there is a comedic element that was created by a misheard lyric in there. Uh, in verse one, the official line is, there's a bad moon on the rise. But it actually sounds like Fogarty's singing, there's a bathroom on the right. Minus the lyric sheet, it's a fact that many, many people sang along or still sing along to the misheard lyric. As if to say, something really bad about to happen. And if you're overcome with fear, there is a bathroom on the right. can't help but laugh at that one. Even Fogarty commented on uh, this misheard lyric. He said that over the years, he would actually hear his audience sing those lyrics back to him. There were actually even a few times where uh, Fogarty sang those lines in concert, of course, tongue in cheek. Babbling Rising has been used often in commercials and films, something that made Fogarty very sick, but he had no power to stop it. You know, because of being swindled out of the publishing rights of his songs by a crooked manager and label president. That unfortunate chain of events is what ultimately led to the untimely demise of Creedence Clearwater Revival. We talked about it in past episodes. For decades, it prevented John Fogarty from playing any of these songs uh, in a live set as a solo artist. I mean, he wrote all these songs. Bad Moon Rising is most prominently featured in the movies American Werewolf in London in 1981. Also Twilight Zone in 82. Toyota used Bad Moon Rising for several heavy TV campaigns in 2022 and 2023. By then he had gotten his publishing rights back. So after the dissolution of CCR that happened in, uh, I think it was October of 72, John Fogarty did some side projects, uh, most notably under the moniker of the Blue Ridge Rangers, with no mention of Fogarty's name, but for much of the 70s and early 80s, he was very reclusive. Embittered CCR drummer once referred to Fogarty as Brian Wilson without the drugs. It took the prodding of one Bob Dylan to finally get John Fogarty to relent and play Bad Moon Rising and other CCR songs during his solo tour in 87 after he had uh, gotten through the lawsuit. I see the bad, moon rising. bad Moon Rising has been covered by such a long list of artists, I'll just name a few here. Bruce Springsteen, Emmy Lou Harris, Typo Negative, Bo Diddley, Lapwagon, The Ventures, Ann Wilson, and Nirvana, just to name a couple. Actually, in 2010, the killer, Jerry Lee Lewis, spearheaded a superstar collaboration for a version of Bad Moon Rising for his Mean Old Man album. Uh, some very famous friends there, Willie Nelson, Keith Richards, and the author himself, John Fogarty. Well, don't go around the night. It's bound to take you alive. You might say that the deal with the corrupt fantasy records was a Bad Moon Rising for the fate of CCR. Uh, the contract was ultimately an apocalypse that wiped out one of the world's biggest rock bands, uh, especially from 68 to 1972. I mean, Creedence had a run unlike any band in history. They had 10 massive hit singles in just under four years, including five that went to number two, like I said. The band never got to number one. I wonder what would have happened if they would have stayed together. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, there's only a few bands that have had a run like that in all of history. You know, I remember when my dad showed me their greatest hits album, Chronicle. I'm sure all of you have it. Uh, this was when I was a kid. I was probably nine years old. Uh, every song was phenomenal. By the time I was in junior high, uh, Everybody I interacted with had their own copy of Chronicle because they heard it so many times being around me, and they loved it. The Bad Moon Rising started with a destitute farmer in New Hampshire that sold his soul for seven years of prosperity, circulated through the infamous assassinations and the diametric of the Summer of Love, then it segued into the 70s and the merciful ending of the Vietnam War. I mean, thank goodness there has not been an apocalypse yet something that was prophesied in the Bible in Matthew chapter 24, way before John Fogarty was born to write about this. But as John Fogarty famously predicted in his last words of Bad Moon Rising, looks like we're still in for some nasty weather in the times we live in. But just remember, there is a bathroom on the right. <laughs> Yeah.
Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about CCR, John Fogarty, Bad Moon Rising. What are your memories of this song? What are your memories? Did you have Chronicle, the greatest hits album? I just can't think of any friends who didn't have it. Uh, let's have a great discussion about this song, about the 60s, about CCR's run. If you like our content, we do invite you to subscribe below. We'd love to have you. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.